Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another great and exciting episode here on My Gardener. Today, I'm going to be doing something that I've never done before. And, you guessed it, it's hydroponics. I'm going to be doing a deep water culture system. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, well, where's the deep water culture set up? I don't have that yet, and that's because I'll be building it, but first I want to get the seeds started. And so next episode, we'll be building the hydroponics setup. This is going to be simply starting the seeds, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to be starting the seeds today. It's going to be a learning experience for both me and you, so hopefully you guys will enjoy this, and hopefully uh, you all will learn something as I learn as well. I decided I'd start doing hydroponics because um, to simply ignore it would be... I guess ignorant um, because a lot of people are growing with it. Uh, it's not my first method of, of choice. I'd rather grow organically outside, but uh, I have 48 pieces of rock wool here. And rock wool, uh, for those of you that haven't seen this, uh, I'll show you guys all close up. Um, but rock wool is basically just really finely spun um, uh, fibers that, because of capillary action, can soak up water similar to soil, even though there's not one ounce of soil in here. It's almost like, it's literally almost like wool. It feels just like wool. Um, it's itchy, just like wool. Uh, I've always hated wool, but um, yeah, it's itchy like wool. And it's called rock wool cubes because they're sectioned off into cubes. And these are, uh, these are the one and a half inch by one and a half inch rock wool cubes. And they're going into a two inch net cup. Uh, like I said. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pick our seeds, which I've already done, and I've chosen uh, a romaine lettuce, a lettuce that somebody sent me from Hawaii. A viewer sent me this, and it's um, uh, green mignonette, and it's uh, it's a head lettuce, it looks like, but um, I don't know, uh, yeah, nicknamed the Manoa lettuce, and uh, so it's a cool one. I'm interested to try this, so thank you. I Forgive me, I forgot who said this to me, but it was some viewer in Hawaii, I do remember that. Um, and then I have some seeds here that uh, were given to me by um, a company that uh, is trying, it's a hybrid type of lettuce, this is not an heirloom type of lettuce, but this is a hybrid, it's a cross. So they want me to uh, try that out to see how I like it. Um, I'm gonna do that as well for them, because um, it's, a, it's a local seed company that sent me the seeds and they're, um, they won't tell me uh, the name of it. It's given a number because it hasn't been given an heirloom name. They're working on actually making it an heirloom, which is going to be a fun one to grow um, because I don't know what I'm going to get. So it's kind of a surprise lettuce. Um, so that's what we'll call it. Uh, I have four packages of surprise lettuce, all different varieties of that. And then lastly, I have a red romaine lettuce. I wanted some color, so um, I got color as well. So, uh, let's get started here. I have the seeds, I have the rock wool, I have warm water. The reason why you want to use warm water is because it soaks into the rock wool a little bit better. Um, so come in close and I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Now first what I've done is I've actually prepared my bed here. I have a heat mat inside uh, this kind of elevated platform here. And so there's a heat mat there to heat up the seeds and the water. And then I have uh, the lights above that are going to be heating down, so I have two forms of heat kind of meeting in the middle there, and then I have um, a holeless tray. This is a seed tray, and it does not have any holes in it, so I can float it with water. Um, well, not really float it, but it, you'll see what I mean. Um, you don't want it to be saturated with water because it's going to drown out the seeds, but you want it to be able to hold water so that it's not just dripping all over the floor. Uh, so you want the the rock wool to be damp, um, and then obviously I have for the top of that. I have a, a uh, humidity dome here, and this humidity dome just sits right on top like that perfectly. Uh, and that is to keep the humidity in so that the rock wool does not dry out. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take your rock wool, and as you can see there, I just wanted to show you guys the cubes, because the cubes are uh, why they call them rock wool cubes. Okay, stick your rock wool inside of your, your uh, holus seed tray. Then you want to take some water and you want to pour your water inside of your seed tray. And this is just making sure that it gets nice and damp. Now what you're going to do 
is you're gonna to wanna to let it sit here for about five minutes to let it soak in very, very well. Um, and then we're going to shake off the excess water. And this was about two liters. This was two liters of water. And that seemed to actually soak it up really, really well. But we're just going to let that all soak in there. And then uh, we're gonna shake off the excess because uh, as you guys can probably see, uh, they're very heavy, but um, see, you don't want uh, you don't want them to be saturated. So if I you know if I bend them, you're gonna get some some water out. So you just want to um, you just want to let them drip and drain after you wait five minutes because you uh, don't want them to be soaked. Otherwise, it's gonna rot the seeds, like I said. All right, so it's been about six seven minutes. It's well drained, and the color has gotten a lot more pale. It's a lot lighter as well, but it's still damp. Um, now it's okay if this does dry out a little bit because we have some more water we can just pour on top to um, re-moisten it if need be. Um, but right now it's just fine as is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant my seeds. I'm going to basically just get out some seeds here, sprinkle them on the table. And uh, these are seeds that I saved from, from last year. I'll find some good quality seeds here. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a little bit of water here because I noticed that the rock wool's kind of starting to dry out a little bit. I'm just gonna gently moisten the rock wool on the top where the seeds are gonna be. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to moisten the end of a toothpick and all I'm going to do is just see the toothpick there. I'm just going to take it. And I'm going to pick up a seed. And I have the seed on the end there. And that's how you pick up all your tiny seeds. And then you simply just take it, poke it down, place it in the hole. And I'm going to do two seeds per hole. Just to make sure that I have good enough germination. Oops, don't seem to be wet enough here. All right. Let's get a seed. Okay, got another seed there. All right, and then what you wanna do is you just wanna take it and gently cover up the hole. Don't, don't pinch it super hard, but just so that it's um, covered because you want the seeds to be in darkness. Seeds germinate better when they're in the dark. You can also take uh, just some really fine vermiculite and sprinkle it over the top. Don't pack it down. Just sprinkle some vermiculite over the holes to uh, make sure that the seeds are dark as well. But you just want to prevent light from getting in. Um, another thing that you can do that I personally would not do is to take another one of these holeless seed trays, flip it over, and then that way it's in the darkness, and then you have to just lift it up, you know, every, maybe every, uh, I'd say maybe every day to make sure that the seeds aren't sprouting. And then once you notice they're sprouting, take it off. I personally am fine with just pinching the rock wool like that. So now I'm going to basically plant these up with all the seeds and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so now that we have all the seeds planted, that took about 10 minutes, a little bit more time than planting outside because you have to use a little bit of precise uh, seed placement, whereas outside it doesn't quite matter too much. Um, but what I was gonna say, now that we have this done, you wanna just take just a little bit of water and I thought that I would talk about really briefly about the benefits of hydroponics that I've been noticing and that uh, it's not necessarily um, as organic, <laughs> let's say, but also without the organic aspect, you can afford to use um, some, some higher NPK numbers with your fertilizers. And then also you can afford to use just regular uh, tap water so you don't have to worry about distilling it because there's no, there's no microbes that you're actually growing with. Um, now, I will say that one unique thing that I'm going to be trying to do, aside from the fact that I'm doing hydroponics for the first time, I'm also going to be doing an organic hydroponics. And this is by using the uh, organic hydroponic uh, feeding formula from Aurora. Uh, the uh, Aurora company, they make very good hydroponic products, um, but I've used them for regular growing, in regular growing cases. Um, when I needed to fertilize my plants at the cottage, I would actually 
feed them through my uh, through my drip irrigation. And one way that I did that is by mixing up uh, the same the same uh, ratio of solution to water, and then I actually just watered my plants in an organic situation in soil um, with a hydroponic fertilizer. So you can do that. Um, and so I will be trying one organic, uh, I'll show you guys really quick what I'm using. It is a, it's like the, uh, there's a, it's a whole feeding regimen, but this is just the amino acid um, portion of it. Um, but they, you know, they have uh, like a bat guano. Uh, this is uh, 0 0.5, 2.5, 1.5. Um, and then they have, you know, I mean, they have all these different uh, regimens, basically. And you mix a little bit of everything from this box. Um, you know, you can kind of pick and choose what you want. Um, and you can basically make a hydroponic system be organic, which is kind of cool. And I'm going to be doing that with one of my setups, one of my 3 by 5 setups. The other one I'm going to be doing with a uh, miracle Grow, uh, like a miracle Grow water-soluble plant food. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm going to be doing is also comparing the results that I get from an organic hydroponic setup and a inorganic hydroponic setup to see if there is a difference and to see which one I like better. Because like I said, I do prefer to grow organically if I can. So what we're going to do now that we have these plants set, we're just going to give them a really quick water here. Now note that these do not have, this water does not have any nutrients in it. This water is completely uh, just straight tap water. Um, it has been pH adjusted because you want to make sure that the pH level of your water, if you're using well water, is not too alkaline. And uh, make sure that your city water is obviously not too acidic. Um, it should be a pretty neutral pH to start out with. So a pH around uh, no lower than 6.5 and no higher than 7.5, 7, 7 being optimal, being neutral. Uh, and that's what I'm using for my seeds. I'm just giving them a quick, just a uh, hydration there. And then all I'm gonna do is stick on the, uh, the humidity dome here, and I'm gonna slide it underneath my lights. And then, like I said, in about a week and a half to two weeks, depending on where we are at with the growth, uh, you should see an episode where we're going to be putting them into our net cups and also constructing our DWC system. So, that's that. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully everyone learned something new, and I know I learned something new as well. So, <laughs> I really enjoyed filming this, so thank you guys for coming along. And, as always, this is Emma Gardner, reminding you to grow big or go home, and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya. I also forgot to mention that I'm going to be doing this entire hydroponics journey in the course of one month. So if you guys want me to grow something besides lettuce, um, I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, because lettuce has a very fast maturity rate, so um, that's why I'm choosing just to do all lettuce. Whereas in the summertime, I might do some herbs, I might do uh, even some tomatoes or peppers, who knows. So basically, I'm kind of limited to just the basics, the really fast maturing stuff. So, uh, you know, sorry about that. Uh, but it should be interesting nonetheless. And it's also going to be a challenge because I have till school starts up. I am on Christmas break. So I have from now, which is uh, December, December 12th, I think. I think it's December 12th. Um, <laughs> until uh, January 16th. So I have a little bit about a month to get this thing finished from start to finish. So it's a nice little challenge. All right. Talk to you guys later. See ya.